Hey everybody, I have not been back on with a video in quite a minute and that is because I was moving into a new home as you can see behind me. Uh, it looks a little bit different. Uh, there is a lot more light and that is partly why they, I chose it. So um, this topic that I'm going to talk about today had been coming through for maybe like two weeks now based off of some experiences I've had. So I'm going to free talk about some of these things, um, but I've keep getting the message that I need to talk about this because other people need to understand what is going on with them so that they can uh, let go of the fear that surrounds it. So here we are talking about uh, free will, uh, negative entities, and differentiating and discerning with what's going on when we're having certain uh, interdimensional experiences. I've had these interdimensional experiences for quite some time. I've had them for actually since I was a kid, but I woke up to it um, when I was ready to actually understand what was taking place with me. And when I finally did that, now I can work with the energy and be able to get information that surrounds my experience because I am here to help you understand the experiences that you are having. So I do hope this video helps you. Um, I, again, I'm going to let whatever come, comes through come through. And I trust that whatever that is, is what you need to hear um, that will assist you. And, and feel free to message me, comment below your own experiences, um, or find me on Instagram or any other ways. And like and subscribe if you like this video and you want more like it. Uh, so let's get started. Um, as I said, for quite some time, I've had interdimensional experiences that I really couldn't explain. I just knew um, that I was having a physical experience. And some people that don't have these experiences experiences or our two left brain are going to write it off as uh, you're crazy or like you have mental issues, things like that. And you know what? People can think whatever they want to think. It's not my problem <laughs> and it's not yours either. So trust what your experience is, that it is your experience and that no one will necessarily understand what that is. However, by sharing information, we can co-create together to help bring understanding to these things so that we can be able to um, kind of commune and, and collectively fit, uh, fill in the pieces that we need to fill in for each other. And that is what we are all here for. We are helping each other fill in the pieces because we all have such a unique imprint that we all need each other, that we are all part of the oneness of it all, and we all carry unique aspects of this, okay? so. The thing that I want to talk about is I have these experiences where I will go into a meditation or even during sleep at night and I will fall into what seems like um, a dimension of my home or wherever I'm at, um, a, just a dimension to the side of it. And in this space, I am given these transmissions of light. And this is normal for me. I get them all the time. I get put into a specific state of trance. I receive interdimensional light and physical vibration where it feels like an earthquake in my body. Some of you have heard me talk about this before. Um, and I always trust it because it is higher light. It is a vibration. I do give them permission, them being my higher guidance or the collective consciousnesses that work with me or the, um, the higher entities that I am in conjunction with um, that are, I guess, me in the end. So... I give them permission to do these things. However, I've noticed that as I've gone along, these experiences get a little bit more intense with each one, and there's new levels of the experience. So as I give them permission, I say, yes, it's okay, and they bring in more frequency and vibration into my physical body, and it feels like literally like an earthquake's going off inside me. I will say, you know, that's okay. You guys are good. But then when it gets too, too, uh, like too intense, I will say, okay, it's enough. I can't take it anymore. Nope, 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 nope. And they would stop. They would stop the process. It would go away. It would be not like a click. It would be like a, like a fade. They would fade it out. Um, and then I would just say, thank you, because I know that it's for me. Now, as time progressed, and this has happened more recently, which is why I'm making this video. I have been in the position where it's a little bit intense and I know that we have free will. I know that we get to say, no, I don't want that anymore. Please stop it. Right. And then they have to stop. It's universal law. We are in control of like what we need for ourselves. And if we aren't having a great experiences, great experience, we can command what we need to happen within it. 
So one night I was receiving the, the frequency and I, it was so intense that I was just like, oh my God, I can't take it anymore. So I literally told them, I said, you please stop. I was like, no more, no more. And then they wouldn't stop it kept going down. And then what it felt like was that my arms were being held down in the bed. <laughs> I know it's going to sound kind of freaky, but don't worry, it has a good outcome. So I felt like my arms were being held down in the bed, right? And like I was being held down, yet the sensation I was receiving was not negative. It was okay. It felt fine. But I had fear around it because I didn't have control over my body. And so I created a lot of fear. I tried to relax into it and allow the process to happen because my body needs to be still in order to receive the frequency and the light. And so they're holding down my body and I start, and then I start really freaking out. And I was like, no, pull me out, pull me out, pull me out. I was like, I don't want this anymore. And they kept going. And I was like, I have free will. I get to say if I don't want this or not, but yet this keeps happening. So eventually it reaches to a certain point and I really fight it. And I say, absolutely not, no more. And then they pull me out. And I explain to these entities and these beings, I say, you know, the light transmission is fine. It's not the transmission. It's not the energy that I'm receiving. It's the fact that I feel powerless w during it. I feel paralyzed. I feel like I'm being held down. I said, I don't like that feeling. They just sent a wave down my body. But I just said, I don't like that feeling. I don't, it's like, I explained to them for everyone else that might be experiencing this. I say, when you guys do this to us, which is for us, but if we don't feel in control of our physical bodies, we can freak out and we can get really afraid with it, right? So I explain this kind of process. And this is why they also explain to me, this is why you go deeper. This is why we don't do it on a lighter level for you. We take you layer, layers deeper so that you can experiencing, experience it without having too much fear surrounding it. And when I look at that and I'm like, I have fear around it, that's something that's a reflection of what's going on with me and I need to clear. So that's also a lesson within it. It's like, Derek, you also have fear surrounding these certain things still, even though you know that these are all reflections of you and that you're the one that's in control and power, you still have fear surrounding this. And this is part of the lesson. You are learning to control, control mitigate and trust even throughout this. So the other day, I'm skipping way forward now to what happened the other day in this apartment since I moved. By the way, this space has so much spirit activity. It was like I stepped into another portal that is going to <laughs> be a conduit of information for everyone else. I don't know what. I didn't realize I was going to do that, but it's definitely that. So I was in a meditation the other day, and it happened again. I was in this space, I could see the tops of the, the windows up there and I could see the windows, I could see all the light. There's a lot of light in here. And this is with the blinds closed, by the way, and there's all this light. So I was in the meditation and I could sense myself being held down. And then my neck was also being held down. And, and it's not the first time I felt a sensation around my neck, it's just that this one was a lot more forceful and like, and so I was like, okay, I'm going to try to relax into this and I'm gonna to try to allow it to happen. And when I tried to relax into it, I could feel, I felt the ecstasy and the energy, the God source, the, the love pouring in. But what happened was, what's this? What's that? But what happened was I freaked out again. And so I went from feeling ecstasy and bliss into freaking out once again. And, and so I was like, okay, enough of this. I'm not going to freak out. I'm going to like, I'm going to keep it clear. I'm going to keep it focused. I know that this is for me. Yet again, I felt powerless. So I kept asking at that point because it just went on for way too long. And I, I kept saying to them, I was like, enough. What's mine is mine. What's yours is yours. I was like, enough of this. Like, no more. I'm in control. You have to listen. I don't want this anymore. And it wouldn't stop. It just kept going on and on and on. And it felt like that earthquake was going off of my body. So I started freaking out a little bit more because this is the longest it's ever gone on. And all of a sudden I could see, and this might sound a little weird to some of you, whatever, it's my truth, I'm gonna say. So I was laying there and around the rim of the, the whole space, I have really tall ceiling too. So around the rim of the entire space and every edge of the, the home, 
I could see red and purple, red and purple, red and purple lights, like beaming little dots of light, really bright, surrounding every edge of my of my home. And I could see it. And I was like, in that moment, I knew that there was, it was trusting and there was nothing to worry about. So I, I finally said, angels, please help, because I was freaking out. I find I get pulled out of it. I get that subtle thing. I was disoriented and I had to sit with it for a second. And what I learned was, and this is the important thing to take away from this experience, is that sometimes on a higher level, we have agreed to an experience like that no matter what. So on a higher level, on an unconscious level, I have already agreed to say, you know what? I'm probably going to freak out during those experiences. Keep going. <laughs> Don't worry about what I have to say. Just keep doing it. And it's hard to think that, but when I do think of that, it resonates within my body so well that I'm like, that's exactly what happens because it's, hap it's not the first time. This is multiple times where I've said, please stop. And then they do it. Nothing happens to me. Nothing wrong goes on. In fact, I level up. So I know that these experiences are for me, not against me. So I came out of it and I said, thank you. I said, thank you so much. I'm sorry I freak out, but it, this is what it feels like for me. So the conclusion I have come to is that, yes, we have free will. And then I've heard other people speak about this too, some challenge that, I'm, that I appreciate and like. And it's that we agree to these things on a higher level without being fully aware of it. So even though we have free will and we're requesting an entity to stop a process and they don't, it's because on some higher level, we have already agreed to receiving whatever that is, no matter what. Because in the end, it was a knowing that, that it was for me. I didn't have any fear about it when I came out of it. It was just during the experience, I have the fear because of the paralysis and not being able to control my body. But afterwards, and right now, I know for sure that it is all for my highest good. And I know that we have free will. And I know that when something is there and it is maybe a lower vibrational frequency entity or being, we are able to command that space we are able to send it to the light. We are able to disconnect from that energy. So I have no worries or no fear that surround that particular <clears throat> experience. And I don't want you to have fear around that either. I want you to be able to trust that the experience you are having is for you and that you're in control, but we must remind ourselves that we are that on a higher level, we have agreed to such an experience. And you might even think about when the abduction stories were rampant back in the 80s. Um, those people, of course, they freaked out because maybe they didn't remember that they agreed on a higher level that they would be experimented on by themselves in a future timeline. So when we think about that, we can ground ourselves much more in the trust that our experiences are for us and not against us. Because if we think that something outside is asserting itself on us, we feel powerless, we feel out of control, and it's honestly not the way that things work. We are the ones that are in control. And the, the light experiences far outweigh the dark ones. And when it comes to ET contact, the ETs that are most in conjunction and working with us are working with us for the higher good. There are a few select situations that might have a lower influence on it, but the majority of ET consciousness working with us at this time is all very benevolent because they are us. And so we are all working together to ascend because without us ascending as a planetary unit, they also cannot ascend. So them helping us helps all. So when I have a negative experience like that, it's not really negative. It's how I perceive the experience. I perceive it as a negative experience because of the condition that I was in. But when I come out of it, I'm like, oh my God, that was for me. I'm, so, I'm such a silly ninny muggins, a cotton headed ninny muggins. And it's okay, I receive. And so, 
I just really wanted to make this video surrounding that topic. Now there's a side part to this that I wanted to talk about too. There's two parts to this. That's the first part. This one has to come forward too because that's what's sticking in my mind. They're saying, don't forget about this. So many people are familiar with Stranger Things. Now I've seen it. I don't remember what they call the in-between world, the like dark world where it's like the underside of the reality that they're living in. I'm sure many of you are like, it's called... <laughs> and um, but what I love about Stranger Things is that it's expressing a reality that exists. Now, I, I can't remember the thing. I think I remember a, a, a demi gorgon. I don't know. I really don't know it. But it's the underworld or the underside of the reality that we're experiencing. Well, these things um, have reality and factuality in involved with it. So. If we want to think of it, we can think of as above, so below. If we're experiencing this light world full of light and beauty and magic and love, there's also the underside of it. There's the equal and opposite of it, as above, so below. So there's another version of it, actually many versions of it in many different dimensions that um, express the dark polarity of what we are experiencing. And so for my entire life, I have found myself going into that dark space. And that's what I call it. I call it dark space. I call it the dark space because it's the in-between. It's like that liminal space of not being here and not being there. But in that just darker underbelly of the life I'm experiencing here. And it comes in many different forms. And some people might call it the underworld. Some people might call it uh, the lower astral, um, and, and it, it can carry different names. So we're going to call it all those things. I call it the dark space <laughs> because I find myself that when I drift off or doze off um, or I'm trying to go to sleep right in that space, and this has happened for two nights in a row now, that's why I'm bringing it up, I will go into that dark space where the entire place is dark. There are no lights, and if there are lights, they're very dim. Um, and you can't turn on any lights. It's just this like darker place. Uh, and I've gone there for my entire life. I remember being young and going into these dark cities and dark towns or um, dark areas. Um, and especially if I'm in a place where I live, I will tend to go into the dark, the night version of that town or city. And I thought it was so interesting. I'm like, why am I finding myself in these dark versions of these places? And it's the same idea of what's in Stranger Things, that there is an as above, so below. So in those spaces, I found that I was bringing light into those places, that I was transforming or instilling light with what I'm here to do in those places to help shift the vibration of that underbelly so that we can all come up together. So I will consistently, almost annoyingly, find myself in that dark space, in the lower astral, in the underworld. And um, it's not that it's annoying. Let me, be on, let me be truthful about it. I'm not annoyed by it. I don't mind going there. It's not like a bunch of bad stuff happens there. I'm actually doing light installation. Light installation, like I'm working at Home Depot. Um, and, and so... What happens though in that space is that there are lower vibrational entities who vibrate in those dark places, who, do, who aren't aware of the light or don't want to wake up into the light. That's where it gets annoying because in that space, entities will pretend to be or to appear as something that you trust or know or feel comfortable with and listen, there's nothing to have fear around. Maybe during there's some fear, but like this is just a frequency and energy that takes on our persona of something that you feel comfortable with. So for example, the last two nights, my grandmother appeared in that dark space, that lower astral. My grandmother, who is a spirit guide for me, this entity appeared as her and then did some weird shit. And then I was like, <laughs> go to the light get me out of here that's the annoying part because they try to appear as something that you'll trust and try to like pull one over on you but you can always tell because there's something weird with them they look weird they're acting weird it's really weird right 
So they tried to do something two nights ago and I was like, absolutely not. And I pulled myself out of that dark space. I woke up in my room and I commanded my space. I cleared my energy. I take responsibility for the experience. I call on angelic forces if necessary. I clear the energy and I say, you have to go into the light and serve from the light. You cannot play with me like that. You can go into the light, serve me from the light, and then you can stay because then we can be the light buddies, right? Light buddies, sounds like my buddy. Um, and so I did that. Then it happened again last night. And my again, it appeared as my grandmother and it was like, like a little goblin, right? And I was like, absolutely not. And I, and I tell it, you have to go into the light, no, no more of this. And I wake up, I come back into my room and I say, you must go into the light with love and I clear the energy and I do all that stuff. And then I go, I literally go right back to sleep because I'm like, peace, thank you, bye. And then it's fine. But that space where it happens is right when I fall asleep. The moment, because I remember looking at the clock all the time and then I go in and then 10 minutes later, I'm looking at the clock coming out of that experience. So it's in this space before we can fully get into a deep rest. It's in that space um, that I find myself going in. And I know some of you are experiencing the same thing. So what I want you to understand about the story that I'm telling you is that we go into these, um, the underworld, the lower astral, and we go in there because on a higher level, just like the other stuff, we have agreed to doing so or else we would not find ourselves there. Some of us have agreed to go into those dark places and to help carry spirits into the light and show them that there is light. Because what I channeled this morning around these experiences is that they cannot, and I knew this before, but it was explained more to me why they like that space. They like it because they don't, they aren't aware that there is more light to access. They aren't aware of more expansive energy that they can be a part of because they vibrate at a certain level. And the darkness that they choose to be in vibrates at that level. So because it vibrates with them, they stay in it. They don't wanna wake up to what majesty there really is because they aren't aware of the feeling of it and that they can. They don't understand how good it feels. All they know is the frequency band that they are, are existing within. So we go in, some of us, to assist in that process, to show them the way to the light and to show them that they don't have to stay in those dark places. So the next time you find yourself in the underworld, the lower astral, the dark space, the dark towns and cities, trust that you are there for a reason. Trust if you're, aware, if you're like aware of it. But even if you don't aren't aware of it and it's after you wake up, Affirm this and say, you know what? This is for my highest good. I chose to be there. I know that I'm, I'm, I'm bringing light to those areas and I'm there for a reason. And some of those places are quite beautiful, beautiful, beautiful places. But there are entities that are stuck in the in-between. And that was kind of like what was going on with this, this situation the last two nights. There's an entity that's caught in the in-between dark space and they simply don't know that they can move into the light. And so I assist them. And sometimes it takes a little bit more coercing to get them into that space because um, they're so attached to staying with what they know and what they are comfortable with. But once they make that transition and we show them, it's absolutely beautiful. And they are part of your spirit team and it's incredible. Okay, so this whole video definitely surrounded fear around interdimensional connection, lower astral issues, issues, lower astral situations, um, and how we decide and making um, an unconscious decision and agreement to have these experiences and um, what we consider negative experiences, but they truly are not negative. They are just a polarized expression of a reflection of what's going on within with us. So meaning if we are being shown that we're meant to do something with that energy or something we have to clear, it is all a reflection of something that we, of a code we carry. And within that, we can take the power back and be able to move forward with power and focus and trust um, and love. So 
I have to get to a session, so I'm gonna go. That was it, that was a lot. So I hope some of you have digested that information. I'm so glad to be back and talking about everything and there will be so much more that's coming. I can feel it. Thank you so much. Please subscribe if this is your first video. Um, I will be posting more things like so. All right, I'll talk to you soon.